Madiba's light shone so brightly, even from that narrow Robben Island cell. Former U.S. President Barack Obama pays tribute to Nelson Mandela, urging South Africa and the world to be inspired to make the right choices at a time of lies, corruption and inequality. A new offer on the table from ESCOM tonight, another bid to break the wage deadlock. Good evening, this is E! News at 8. I'm Sally Burdett. To our top story, and it's one of the high points of the Nelson Mandela Centenary Week. Of course, tomorrow, the 18th of July, Madiba would have been 100 years old. Now, in honor of this remarkable man who changed our country and touched the world, this afternoon, former U.S. President Barack Obama delivered the Nelson Mandela Lecture at Wondrous Stadium. Our U.S. correspondent, Simon Marks, was at the speech. He joins me in studio now. Good evening, Simon. Before we get to some of those extracts from the speech, your overall impression? Well, I have to say, first of all, my overall impression was a sense of almost deja vu, because it's now been, what, uh, well over a year since I heard a president of the United States making that kind of a coherent speech. This wasn't the sort of stream of consciousness that we're now used to from his successor in the White House, President Donald Trump. But this was uh, former President Barack Obama using the Nelson Mandela Memorial Lecture with all the authority that that event brings, I think, really, to begin perhaps the path of his re-emergence into the debate in the United States because we've seen so little from him over the course of the last few months. I thought it was really interesting what he did is that he used the 100-year mark to test, to say how much really has changed for the good, but also how much we still have to overcome. Uh, I want you to listen to this mm. little extract, what he said about race relations. Let's take a listen. Plain fact that racial discrimination still exists in both the United States and South Africa. Interesting. I mean, he said so much about that, so many inequalities. And tying the two together. And this came at the end of a long sweep through history, a 100-year examination of history where he said, look, uh, the world succeeded in lifting a billion people out of poverty, in improving all sorts of technological and social environments in which people live, and yet we didn't see his political class, the coming rise of these left wing, left wing and right wing populists who have championed the sense that some in the United States and in other parts of the world, obviously including South Africa, feel left out. And so he was really offering a clarion call for progressives not to uh, give rise to cynicism, but to regroup, as he put it, to innovate and to build in a bid to overcome those populist tendencies. He was speaking in Johannesburg but of course on a global stage. What he said about lying politicians mm. no. <laughs> has certainly caused a ripple. Now let's just take Absolutely. a listen because it was fantastic. Unfortunately, too much of politics today seems to reject the very concept of objective truth. People just make stuff up. <laughs> they, they just make stuff up. We see it in the growth of state-sponsored propaganda. We see it in internet-driven fabrications. We see it in the, in the blurring of lines between news and entertainment. We see the, the utter loss of shame among political leaders where they're caught in a lie and they just double down and they lie some more. It used to, Look, let me say, politicians have always lied. But it used to be if you caught them lying, they'd be like, oh, man. <laughs> now they just keep on lying. You know, the kids Who would on? say he was subtweeting Who someone. Who on earth do you think he was talking about? <laughs> yeah. I mean, but that's what's so fascinating, right? In that speech, he never once used the word Trump. Mm. And yet so much of that speech, while in universal terms was aimed at a South African audience and a global audience, so much of that speech was aimed at the United States. And I think that there will be Democrats watching that speech saying, ah, does this mean Barack Obama now is ready mm. to put his head back above the political parapet and perhaps join some of us on the campaign trail? Because remember, we are four months away from midterm elections in the US that will serve as a referendum on the rule of the man 
whose name Barack Obama chose not to invoke there. <laughs> Thank you so much for that analysis. That's our US correspondent Simon Marks. He attended the Nelson Mandela Memorial Lecture this afternoon in Johannesburg. Well, the elders, an independent group of global leaders working for peace and human rights, met today also to honor Madiba's legacy. They opened a peace park at Johannesburg's Delta Park. Our reporter Kailile Kumala was there. Hundreds Bucks of Hope Peace Park has been opened to the public to honor these people hailing from different parts of the globe. They are peacemakers, advocates for fair justice, and defenders of human rights. You are grassroots justice defenders, environmental protectors, and builders of peace. You are rejecting violence against women, exposing brutality by the institutions we should trust. You are mighty, each and every one of you. The group of elders has been instrumental in championing a number of initiatives to sustain former President Nelson Mandela's legacy across the world. The elders, I think, will, can do the kind of work that, um, uh, that uh, he, he was doing personally, which, which is trying to help on a global, global basis. And the elders can live on for generations because as, as the most respected politicians um, can become elders in time and, and continue his good work. Millions of people around the world are celebrating Mandela's 100th birthday at a moment in human history when we sorely miss his moral leadership, his sharp wit, he was such a tease, and his constant drive to ensure no one is left behind. For many here, Mandela remains the icon who ignited them to be at the forefront of ensuring that freedom, peace and culture of human rights become the norm across the globe, and not only in certain countries. Kailiche Kumalo, Johannesburg. Let's get the latest now on the ESCOM wage talks. As we know, there's been deals and counter deals on the table, off the table, but there has been a development this evening, and our reporter, Sindela Masikane, joins us on the line. Good evening, Slee. Is there a deal? No deal, Sally. In fact, uh, we saw another marathon round of negotiations once again here in Woodmead, and the uh, ESCOM has actually tabled two new offers for the union to to take back to their members uh, for consultation. Option A now is a wage increase offer of 7% for the next three years. The second option, option B, is a wage increase offer of 7.5% for this year and 7% for the next two years. Both these options come with a housing allowance based on CPI, but the sticking point in these negotiations is still the issue around bonuses. ESCOM says that they're still waiting for their financial statements which have been audited to be signed off and they're saying that this will be finalized later this week. The issue around bonuses is really what's going to make or break a deal here. Thank you very much. That's Lindele Masikane telling us about the two offers on the table, one a 7% increase over three years, the other one 7.5% for this year and then 7% for the two years thereafter plus a housing alliance but no word yet on any deal in that regard. Still ahead on E! News, some encouraging news from the 2017 HIV prevalence study. HIV and AIDS was a cause very close to Madiba's heart, perhaps fitting in his centenary week then that we get the results of a new study on how we're coping with the disease in South Africa. The data shows that by 2017, around 7.9 million South Africans were living with the virus, and about 60% of those people are taking antiretrovirals. Erin Bates reports that while the data reveals great success in our management of the disease, a number of challenges remain. From the entrance to the Department of Health in Pretoria, it's clear that preventing the transmission of HIV is a priority. The Minister of Health says changing behaviour is far more difficult than biomedical strategies to prevent the transmission of HIV. When it comes to socio-behavioural interventions, it's still a big struggle. So the successes we have seen today 
are based mostly on biomedical intervention. But the mother-to-child transmission, I mean, in 2004, there were 70,000 babies born HIV positive every year. But because of the success of the prevention of mother-to-child transmission, we have now dropped the figure from 70,000 to below 4,500. Professor Kangalani Zuma from the Human Sciences Research Council was one of the leaders of the survey. It's the fifth in a series looking at behavior and other aspects of HIV AIDS in South Africa. He's highlighted some of his concerns based on the latest data. There are still uh, new infections that are taking place and more so among young girls aged 15 to 24 years of age, even though we know so much about HIV and AIDS. Both Matswaledi and Zuma say that knowledge is power and the more people who know their HIV AIDS status and deal with it responsibly, the better. The latest South African HIV AIDS prevalence, incidence, behavior and and communication survey is based on 33,000 interviews with intimate questions about the birds and the bees. It's now up to researchers to sift through that data. Aaron Bates, Pretoria. The Economic Development Department is proposing tougher penalties for companies who flout competition law. The Competition Amendment Bill has been introduced to Parliament. If passed, this could see offending companies fined up to a quarter of their turnover. Government says anti-competitive behaviour is keeping small, particularly black businesses, out of the market. Mr Kibbett reports. More than 7 billion rand in fines have been issued by the Competition Commission since 2010, affecting industries such as construction and bread production. Often South Africa's poor are the losers to collusion, price fixing and anti-competitive behaviour. Government is proposing that offending companies are fined up to 25% of their turnover. Economic Development Minister Ibrahim Patel says it's a fair punishment agreed to by business. The bill that we've now finalised represents uh, an um, appropriate and effective balance. That's the language that was used, an appropriate and effective balance. Patel says the legislation will also act as a deterrent to monopolies keeping small black businesses out of the sector. He hopes the new law will be passed by Parliament by the end of the year. Lester Kivett, Parliament. Top stories. Diba's light shone so brightly, even from that narrow Robben Island self. Former U.S. President Barack Obama pays tribute to Nelson Mandela, urging South Africa and the world to be inspired to make the right choices during a time of lies, corruption and inequality. Two new offers on the table from ESCOM, another bid to break the wage deadlock. Well, we've got your weather up next. And then who is the better dancer, Madiba or Obama? Welcome to the Weather Centre. We are going to stay with isolated rain showers as we go through the night heading into Wednesday over the western parts of the county as well as across the easternmost areas of Kwasulu Natal, Pumalanga and Limpopo. And we start off Wednesday with fog patches over parts of Kwasulu Natal and the Mpumalanga Highfield and some showers still going on over the western areas. However, as we head towards the afternoon hours, it's going to become drier for the western parts of the country. Mostly sunny skies are expected for the rest of the country and it's going to be warmer for eastern and southeastern South Africa as well as along the south and the west coast. Then in the evening we could see a bit of drizzle along the Mpumalanga and Limpopo escarpment areas. Now it's going to be partly cloudy with isolated showers in the northern Cape around Springbok, Calvinia and Sutherland, mostly sunny for Kimberley and Portsmouth Bay both warming to around 19 degrees on Wednesday afternoon. Isolated showers are also possible over parts of the western Cape. However, it's going to be dry for Cape Town warming to a pleasant 25 degrees in the afternoon. We are expecting partly cloudy skies and warm daytime temperatures for the western areas of the eastern Cape. It's going to be mostly sunny but cooler over the eastern sections. Mostly clear skies persist across much of KwaZulu Natal, Port Shepstone, and Deben, warming to around 22 degrees. Similar top temperatures are forecast around Richards Bay. 
It's going to be mostly cloudy once again from Bombela with a high of around 18. Mostly clear but cool over the high felt areas. Light rain and drizzle can be expected around Sanin and Toyandu. Polokwane should be partly cloudy and dry, warming to around 16 degrees on Wednesday afternoon. We are going to see mostly sunny skies once again across much of the northwest. Highs around 17 for Zerast, Rustenburg and around Fenderstorp. The free state will be mostly sunny and cool to mild once again, but pretty chilly in the morning for much of the province. Gauteng will continue to see a few patches of cloud overhead. Johannesburg and Soweto warming to around 16 degrees on Wednesday afternoon. Now looking ahead to your Thursday, it's going to be partly cloud and warm to hot for the southwestern areas. Mostly clear skies for the rest of the country. We end the work week with clear skies across much of South Africa. And finally, as you know, former U.S. President Barack Obama delivered a powerful speech at this afternoon's 16th Nelson Mandela annual lecture, but there was time for a bit of fun. President Cyril Ramaphosa, drawing similarities between Madiba and Obama, couldn't resist throwing some gentle shade Obama's way. Much as there are many similarities, there is one area where President Obama cannot match Madiba. Unfortunately, he cannot dance as well as Madiba can dance. <laughs> Let me begin by a correction. and a few confessions. The correction is that I am a very good dancer. <laughs> I just want to be clear about that. <laughs> Michelle is a little better. That said, let's take a look at the moves of both these great leaders. Barack Obama dancing in Kenya recently versus the late, great Madiba doing his world-famous shuffle. You decide. Let's recap your top stories. Diba's light shone so brightly, even from that narrow Robben Island cell. Former U.S. President Barack Obama pays tribute to Nelson Mandela, urging South Africa and the world to be inspired to make the right choices during a time of lies, corruption and inequality. Two new offers on the table from ESCOM in another bid to break the wage deadlock. From me and the team, it's a very good night.